Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let me let me slightly move this so that we have less of a camera in our way. Maybe, maybe, oh, maybe if I come over here. There we go. We're just gonna zoom in. There we go. All right, perfect. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's hobby live stream. Now, I know normally on Saturdays, it's not a hobby live stream for us. However, I have been sitting on this, this, I don't have to hold it up. It's big down here. I have been sitting on this tank for a little while. I've been needing to get it started for an upcoming video that I have where it's going to be featuring this little T, this little 38T, almost said that backwards. I don't know why I always want to say the T before the 38, but I do. And I'm very excited to actually get started on this today. I'm also incredibly nervous. I am not going to lie. Um, I'm very nervous about working on this. I have been very hyped for this and very nervous. Okay, before we get started, I do want to say hello to everybody in chat because, my goodness, there are so many of you. Hello to Justin, to War Crimes 177 to AR, to the Russian friend who I cannot pronounce the name of, to William and Darkside Bob, to Bob, to Sean, David, Havman, Marcos. Hello, 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 hello. Oh my goodness. Okay. So here's the plan today. We need to do a couple of things. The first step, as you can see, I've already primed the Panzer. I decided to go with just standard German gray. I went ahead and picked up a Tamiya rattle can and primed it in just German gray. So... I know it's Czech. We're going to prime it in that color. I already have primed it in that color. However, I was looking at reference for this tank online. And I was actually seeing that oftentimes in a lot of the reference material, and I actually just want to get that back up on my other screen. So a lot of the times I'll, this tank has a little bit of a blue tone to it. And I have a plan for this because I did originally pick up, I picked up three rattle cans. You can actually see the tests that I did here. Let me just move the little panzer out of the way and I will show you my three options that I did here. So this is the color that we ended up going with. It looks a little bit darker here because I also did some testing on this of putting one of my washes over top of it because I wanted to see what it would look like. Oh, are you showing them the, look at that. So those are some of the references that I've been seeing. And you'll notice that the tank has a very blue color tone. And so I did pick up a blue. Just turn that off. When, when you're done showing the tanks, just turn off. Uh, window capture. Window capture. Understood. Okay. So those are the, the references that I've been looking at. And I really noticed like this IRL one right here. Let's see. Oop. From the wikipedia page so like it has a really blue tint to it right you see how like very very blue it is so what i ended up doing um let me close this so what i ended up doing is i bought three different rattle cans from tamiya specifically and i ended up going with a blue so like a navy blue color tone i got german gray and then i got gunmetal gray and ultimately what i ended up deciding as much as i actually really like the way that the blue turned out and i actually think it looks very similar to what we see in this reference here it's a, a nice navy blue color tone right however what i decided to do is go with the german gray because it's the lightest of the three color tones and i figured i could build up some color so these are actually here. We've got the rattle cans here. So these are the ones that I ended up picking up. I primed it in German gray, this TS4. But I also tried out TS48 and AS8, which is the navy blue and then gunship gray. I really like both of these. I'm going to find something else to use these on, but that's not what I ended up going with. So I ended up going with just the German gray. Then I was actually out at Hobbies Unlimited literally before the stream, uh, before I got lunch and everything. And I picked up a couple of other paints as well for potential highlight colors. So I picked up this Royal Light Gray um, and then this, I think it's IJN Gray, which I don't know if that's, I don't know what that stands for specifically, but I got these two colors 
because if these are similar to what the colors are, I actually think this is going to work as a really nice highlight color on my tank. But what we're going to do first is I actually need to wash the entire thing in this blue shade that I have from Citadel because I really like the Citadel shades. And that is why these two colors actually look a little bit darker than they might normally look out of the can if you guys are familiar with these brands of paints. It's because I did a test of the wash over this. Now I do... And you guys can actually let me know in the chat. And I see hello to everybody who is also just joined in. Don't worry, I will say hello to everybody here in a moment, but I wanted to get this out. So I do actually have a question for those of you that maybe have worked with the Tamiya acrylics um, and also have worked with standard just Citadel acrylics. These are alcohol-based, the Tamiya ones, and the Citadel ones are water-based. I don't believe they're gonna have a problem, and I am going to use these to test and see how the edge highlighting works here, but there's no reason that they shouldn't have a problem mixing. I'm not gonna be using that much water, so I don't think the alcohols will be a problem. Like these being alcohol-based will be an issue, but I would love to know for any of you that have done scale models before or anything like that, let me know if, if this is going to be a problem. Like I said, I am going to do my own testing, but, and I have other grays that I could use too if that ends up being a problem, but I figured I'd ask before I get started. So the first thing that I need to do is go ahead and get this blue wash over top. Um, I have not tried Matthew Onion um, RAL7021. I'm actually not sure, is that a paint or... Ah, IJN, is that, a, is that a paint or is that like a brand? Let me know what that is because I'm actually not familiar with what at all what that is. I see that IGN is Imperial Japanese Navy. I was wondering if that's what it was, but I wasn't 100% sure. Is there a droid that starts with IGN? I think there is, and that was why I was getting a little tripped up, but I assumed it was military based, and I was wondering if it was like Imperial Japanese Navy, but I wasn't... I didn't know what the N stood for. The Navy part was actually what I was tripping up on. Do you mind if I turn your music up a little? Not at all. Let me know if that's too much, folks. I shouldn't have a problem with the paints. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, and I have my Vortex mixer on the uh, windowsill over here, so I will definitely make sure they're properly agitated and everything. I can even add, I have some loose um, ball, ball bearings that I could even throw in there to add some additional agitation. Oh, it's IG. The droid's IG. Got it. Thank you, Nemeth. I appreciate the compliment. And thank you for everybody answering the uh, what IJN stood for. Because I was I thought it was Imperial Japanese, but I could not figure out what the N was. Ah, I should check out AK Interactive's line, actually. That's a good call, Paul. Because um, the Game Castle near me has a variety of their stuff. When I get to the weathering step, I might actually swing by there and see if I can find some other things because I kind of want to do some really muddy treads. Um, oh, that was the other thing I wanted to ask. So originally I was planning on painting the treads in like a black, but I think they're normally just metal. So should they maintain the same color as the rest of the tank? Because when I've been looking at some of the reference material, that seems to be the case. And I don't know what is more traditional to do when painting the model tanks, but I have been jabbing, gabbing for like, I don't even know how long, 10 minutes now, um, 14 minutes, and not even working at all on this tank yet. Oh, actually, I have one other thing that I want to talk about before we actually get working on this, and it's a little bit of a tease of what the next uh, scale model product, it, product, project, not product, project is going to be. So give me one second, I want to go grab it real quick. Okay, so at the beginning, I mentioned how I had gone to Hobbies Unlimited earlier today to grab some paints, right? Well, I also couldn't help myself, and I grabbed something else as well. I had previously asked on Instagram and YouTube community and Facebook and all of the places, basically all of my socials, and I was like, hey, so this is what I'm thinking for my next tank, but I'd love input on what you guys might want to see me build. And I got a lot of feedback, a lot of great tank options, but 
because I think I had mentioned that I was interested in doing a Sherman, a lot of people made recommendations of Shermans. Specifically, this one. I had it upside down. This Sherman. So, I picked up another 135 scale Tamiya kit. This time, however, it is... Let me just pop it into screen so you guys can see more clearly. Bam! The Sherman EZ-8. This was recommended, like, of every tank that was recommended, this bad boy was the one recommended the most. So I decided, screw it. While I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab it right now because I know that I think people are gonna really like seeing this. I have been interested in doing a Sherman for a while, so getting the M4A3E8. Why is it called the E? I mean, I understand because of this, but why is that translate into EZ8? Somebody explain that to me because I don't understand um, why it is called that, but I am assuming some of you guys probably know. So tell me about that in the comments while I get my wash, that's the word I was looking for, shook up and ready to apply to my Panzer. I'm really glad that you guys are excited about the Sherman. <laughs> it's called that because of the phonetic alphabet. M4A3E8. I don't quite understand. The letters and numbers, it's for the model of oh, average. Oh, it's speak. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. If you look at the uh, M4A3E8, yeah, yeah. you can see it as easy. Eight. I genuinely don't see Turn it. Turn the four into an E. Okay. The three is an S. Okay. E's a E. Okay, I guess I kind of see it. I, maybe I just, my brain doesn't work that way. I guess. I don't, I, I get it, but... Yeah. yeah, basically what it is is people see the 4A3E as easy in the same way that we would spell leet, L... Three, 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 three seven. seven. Yeah, no, I knew that. Like, I get, I like that's. I guess I just don't see the M as an, as the E. The M part. isn't part of it. Oh. The M is like the mark easy eight. You know? I see. I uh, okay. I see it more now than I was trying to fit the M into the word easy, and uh, I was like, no. I was like, what? How does the M get there? I don't understand that part. <laughs> I called it lead speed. I knew I was gonna trigger someone. <laughs> Okay, so it's a specific type of alphabet, Phon phonetic. I thought isn't isn't that model four A three experimental eight? That's what it stands for. Okay, the E is for easy. So then, what the, what the hell is all the other shit for then? I mean, I get now that it's model A E three. So it's just so the E eight is where it gets the easy eight name from. It's, it has nothing to do with the other four numbers in front of it. Okay. My brain's just trying to wrap around that. So, and then you said that... Okay. Weird. I... I... Uh, I... It's really funny to me because I grew up in a military household, but my dad was Air Force and a weatherman. So it had nothing to do with like the tanks or any of that kind of stuff. Nothing, nothing quite as cool as that. Um, and so like I never, and he never really involved me in much of the military stuff that he was doing. I think mostly because it was involving the weather and he probably thought I'd find that boring. 
Um, but yeah, I never got really like that education about like tanks and stuff like that. All Shermans are M4A3s. Oh, I see. Why are they all, all of that? Wouldn't they, wouldn't it change over time if it's, cause you said it's a model four A3. So wouldn't they do like model five, model six? Like what happened to model one, two, and three? If they're all M4s. Oh yeah, no, I know that alphabet, like the A, the A, Abel, B, Baker, Charlie, C for Charlie, you know, F for Frank, B, Victory, etc. But like, I get those. Um, okay, so they do change the A portion, but they're all M4s. No, there are M5s. Okay. See, now we're getting into it. It's not all the same. They don't all have the same number. Don't lie to me, people. All right, let's get this paint open. I need to find a brush. Um, I need, I want something big. This will work. Uh, will this actually, will this do? I'm also gonna take that off. Will this be good? I think this will be fine. I'm just going with a big, cheap brush to spread this paint around. M3 is the Lee, M4 is- oh, I see. Okay, so the model portion is a designation for- or the M number is a designation for all American tanks then? So it's just like Model 1, Model 2, Model 3, and they just have like their names, separate names. I understand now. Okay. No, Marcos, I am not using an airbrush. I'm not going to be using an airbrush. We're going brush all the way because I'm still scared of airbrushes. I've used them very limitedly and I don't have the proper ventilation in this space to be able to set up to do it, to even do it on camera. So, and it would be also very loud. So I wouldn't want to be doing that. So we're going brush this time. Just gonna get a bunch of this on here and we're gonna water it down some. All right, I'm gonna start on the underside in case it just horribly borks up or something. Oh yeah, no, I actually don't even think I need to water it down, really. I think I just need to spread it around. This is looking great. I think as long as you have water in your brush. Yeah, 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 exactly. Go back and soak up the streakiness. That's actually because of my brush, not the paint. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna switch to a different brush. Um. Ah, here it is. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's better. So that'll smooth out. Ooh! Where did I pop that off from? Um, what? Explain to people why you changed brushes. Oh, um, so the reason I switched brushes, apologies, is because this cheaper brush that I was using, um, that doesn't, oh, it has to have a brand name on it. Um, this is just from like a really cheap, like $20 multi-pack set, which means that the brushes are just kind of garbage. And I was noticing that there was a excessive amount of streakiness because of, here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. So you see how, once it decides to focus... Okay, so you see how the brush is immediately sort of split like that? I've never used this brush before. The fact that it's already splitting and not able to keep its shape is a problem. That means it's really, really cheap. This is just this little like synthetic thing. So because I was noticing that I was getting this like horrible, like consistent pattern of lines, that uh, normally I would not really be too concerned about, especially the wash. However, because we're working with some larger flat panels, I don't want that to be as visible. So even though this one is actually also frayed, um, this Citadel brush is just keeps its, it holds the liquid better and it moves the paint around more securely. Um, I need to figure out where I popped this little piece. Oh, 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 I see. Oh geez, okay, I did it on the tread. It was literally a tread piece. Understood. Nope, nope, goes this way. Well, excuse me, I need to get some glue. Yep, let me just grab some glue. Sean, thank you for the $5, by the way. That is awesome. Thank you so much, sir. Um, let me just glue this bad boy back into place. I find it funny that of all places that it pops off, I actually thought I glued the treads on pretty damn securely, but apparently not. Apparently not. Don't worry, folks. I am aware this is a visual art form that has to there. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. I forgot I was zoomed in. Also, I'm going to switch this thing. I think you have it on auto. Oh, do I? There we go. I think that should be good. I'm just going to tack. Just going to do a little... Just gonna check if your autofocus is on correctly. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. Can you actually bring me one of these lights and just have it shine this way? I think it's a little dark looking. I find it to be a little dark looking. Oh my gosh. Every time I open, like, I love this blue. Ah, but, oh, but the fumes. The fumes, when I first open them up, are just pungent. There, I think that looks better, actually. There you go. Thank you, thank you. Sean, I believe this tank took me about, like, six or eight hours to build? I would say less than that, but maybe. Four to six hours, maybe? Like, total to build? It wasn't too bad at all. It is not going to be part of my Space Marine unit. No. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I just got some pooling. Some aggressive pooling because of the angle this was resting at. All right, everything's fine. I fixed it. Um, I'm letting this dry before I flip it over. I don't want it to oddly swash in some weird way. Brian, thank you for the $10. <laughs> a, tre a treadhead is born. Yes, I am... And officially a treadhead. I can't believe I knocked one off. I'm so embarrassed that I, like, started working on this and immediately broke my build. <sighs> Please tell me that has happened to you guys, right? This is not, like, an uncommon thing. You've also knocked the treads off of your off your builds as you're working on them. Oh, that's really awesome, John. I definitely want to do something like that in the future. I The Merkava, actually, that I built was the first model tank that I built both IRL, like just in life and also on um, YouTube, like as a video. 
I want to turn that one. There's a specific, I can't remember now what it was. There was a specific Imperial Guard tank that looks kind of similar to it. And I don't remember what it was. Although, actually, now that I say that, isn't the... No, the Sherman's not... What is the Lehman Russ based off of? What's, what is... Isn't it... I think the Lehman Russ is based off the British battle tank. Is it the Abram, then? The Bane Blade. Yes, I think the Merkaba does look like the Bane Blade. Yeah. Yes. So that was actually one of my plans for that, was I was going to do it up in Imperial Guard color scheme, like Cadia, because I, I, I love the Cadians. Although I could see myself doing it in Kriegs, like the, the Death Corps Kree, because I do actually have a small section of them as well. Um, but not so bad. Well, good, Chipster. Thank you. That makes me feel a little bit better that I'm not the only one knocking pieces off of my mouth. Yeah, what it is, the Lehman Russ body type is inspired... The Matilda, apparently. Is, yeah, it's also inspired by the World War One shaped tanks. Ah, oh, like okay. The ones that end up inspiring the Land Raider and all that. Too. Got it. Okay, that's what it is. They're based off the World War One. I. I knew there was something. I couldn't remember which tanks they were based it's off that of. that shape, that, like, long nose, yeah. long butt. Yeah, 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 which I do actually really like. Maybe, you know what? Maybe after the Easy 8... Maybe I'll do a World War One tank next. Um, that would be actually really fun. Because I've done the Israeli tank with the Merkava, which was really cool, actually. I, I, I admit, their Merkava was a fun build. Um, mostly because of the different materials that I got to work with. Well, yeah, isn't all... Like, isn't that the thing in Warhammer, though? Is that all of the machines are technically not even war machines to begin with. Like, they were all had other uses, whether they be mining tools or construction tools, or like you said, the, um, the rust was meant to be a tractor. So, like, that was, that was still the, the thing, is they just converted a bunch of their farming equipment, which, I mean, kind of happens in real life, too. I mean, look at how many of the car manufacturers ended up creating tanks or planes during World War II. Object 49B also looks like a Bane Blade. Okay, cool. I don't think I'm familiar with the the Moloch. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correct. Let me see. Uh, let me bring my keyboard over. It would help if I was actually in Oh. Ah, I thought when it was wireless, it still was connected. Apparently not. Mm. Nope. Please be over here. Thank you. Okay, well, if I just type in Moloch, I get a demon, so that's that's promising. Ah, okay. I am now- I took- it took me so long to actually get to an image of the tank, because if I just put in Moloch tank, it gives me tank tops with the demon on it. <laughs> Which I'm like, thank you, internet. Thank you. Um, however, now that I put World War One in there, it, I'm actually getting pictures of the tank. Huh? Oh. Oh, it's so cute. It does have, like, they do have a really distinctive shape, the World War I uh, tanks, don't they? Why is it designated male, Dark Side Bob? Is there a female one as well? And what's the difference? Because I know like in plugs and stuff, you know, it designates like which type of plug it is, but like what is what is it designating in regards to the tank? A gun type maybe? Like I'm trying to imagine like what would be the male-female end 
I guess, of this tank. And do they connect? Oh, that's really cool. A fully restored British Matilda, like, just on display in the, the museum. Man, that would be so rad. Josh, no, I am not. Ah, okay, so the male one had cannons and the female one only had machine guns. Interesting. Is it because it had a singular cannon and the machine guns had two? And so, like, is that why they designated it female and male? Michael, you'd be surprised. I mean, I think a tank in general would just strike fear into the hearts of somebody, and so therefore, even if it was cute, it might- that'd be- I'd, I don't know, I'd be more terrified if this adorable little thing came in and then also devastated me, because traumatic. <laughs> Alright. Uh, that section on the bottom has dried. I am happy with how it's come along. I also need slightly more narrow brush, though, for some of these side panels, because I don't want to continue to knock things off wildly. Uh, so I think we're going to work on the treads next. Really liking how this is looking. Like, even with a heavier wash, like, it's just a really pretty... It turns into a really nice blue-gray color tone. And that's exactly what I'm seeing, like, in my references. So it's kind of what I was hoping for, and I'm glad it's going <laughs> how I intended. Shrek, welcome to the stream. Dude, I think this Panzer 38T is cute. I also think most, you know, things in the Nurgle lineup are cute, though, too. So I have weird opinions of what is considered cute versus not cute. And I just kind of roll with it. Finish, finish spreading that around. Don't want awkward cooling to happen there. Okay, that's looking good. You know, I don't actually know. I've only watched the Indiana Jones films, like, once each. Because Indiana Jones has just never, never really been my jam. I also just never have really liked Harrison Ford. Like, not that he's a bad actor or anything, let me be very clear. I think he's a fine actor. Um, I just kind of... He never really seemed like he respected his fans of the... In, like, of the franchises that he was part of very often. And maybe he did of his Indiana Jones stuff, but I just never really got into Indiana Jones growing up or anything like that. So, I never experienced that. But I don't remember him really being that into Star Wars until, like, much later when it had really blown up, and so I kind of... I always got the impression he... He didn't really like being associated with it. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's what I, like, I feel like I was told. But 
The Chaos Cultists would like you all to know that the views expressed within this stream pertaining towards Han Solo, Indiana Jones, and Decker are all those of the host and do not necessarily reflect those opinions of the management, the company, or those others who work therein. Thank you, and have a nice day. I mean, I thought that I, I thought I had already kind of made that pretty clear that this was my own opinion. <laughs> but yes, they they do You're not. A bold woman. I know. I understand. But listen, I'm gonna stand my ground, okay? I just. I don't, I've never found him to be a heartthrob like a lot of other people have. And I just, I've never really been into the Indiana Jones films. Like, I think they're fine. Like, I, I've i watched them. Um, Crystal Skull was the worst of them by far. Uh, but I don't think anyone's going to argue with me on that. Um, and the other ones I thought were enjoyable for when they came out and what they are. But because I didn't watch them when they originally came out and I never was into him um i just i don't know and i just don't like han solo you guys can fight me all you want but like he's like very low on my my tier list of of overall favorite star wars characters he's just not gonna be at the top man he's not gonna be at the top um did you answer the question about the wash i did not i missed the question oh how did you create the wash i did not create the wash at all I bought the wash from my local hobby store and it's just a Citadel, um, it's the Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade. So it's just a blue wash and that is all that it is. Hello, Zana! Thank you for sending some love on my way. I appreciate that. You are wonderful. That is fair and I completely respect him for that. I just, I don't know. I feel like if you're going to be part of something that becomes that large, I just, I like seeing when actors embrace it a little bit more. And I just never really got the impression that he did. And when I see other fan, like other actors who are in Star Wars, especially, who just really, really get into it and just embrace the culture that it is it makes me happy so his attitude just rubs me the wrong way you know what i mean i'm just getting the side the underside of the treads real quick if you guys are wondering why i'm just sort of wiggling my brush against it <laughs> i'm just getting in between and because they're so, so little and delicate, it's kind of, the paint's just sort of sliding all over the place. See, and Bob, I completely understand that because, and I agree with you, like Robert Downey Jr. is a great example of an actor who really embraced his character and or at least the culture that like became like surrounded his character and made i don't know made it that much more worthwhile to invest in as a fan hello for you welcome to the stream um and i just i really like that part and so knowing that ford just never really did that until you know he'd already made a shit ton of money off of it and went, oh, okay, well, I guess maybe I can care about this now. That's, I guess that's my problem with it. It's my unpopular, I guess, opinion of the day. If, if, if found unpopular. All right. I think we need to let that dry before we start working on the other angle of these treads. So I'm going to just sit, let that sit there for a minute and we will chat for a little bit. What is Mosquito Coast? Is that a Harrison Ford film?
So my plan actually after I end up doing the wash is I either going to go back in and either edge highlight some areas with some of this blue paint here. So I might go in and use this color on it to do some edge highlighting, bring a little bit of brightness back to it, maybe give it a little bit of like a chipping effect. Um, and then after that, I need to actually do a little bit of cleanup. There are a couple of sections on this and I haven't picked out exactly where they all are. I would need to look at my reference again, but there's a couple of like bags and other things that I want to paint up in slightly different colors from what the rest of the tank is. So I'm going to reprime those in I think gray sear is what I'm going to do so that I can use some contrast paints on them a bit more. Then from there, we'll probably paint those accessories up and then we'll start getting into like the weathering and chipping. And what I'm going to do for the weathering and chipping is I'm going to go in first with some black to give it some like just depth. Then I think I'm going to go in with some, I don't think I'm going to go with silver. Specifically, I was planning on going with more of a gunmetal color tone. Like I, I really like literally um, lead belcher, I think is the, the, you know, the classic Warhammer color. Um, so I was thinking of using something similar to lead belcher. I also have a couple of model colors from Vallejo and then Army Painter that are also like steel color tones. So I'll pick whichever one I think works best for the tank. That will be added on with some like sponges and stuff, both the black and the the, the silver, whatever color tone I go with. Again, leaning towards more towards a, a gunmetal. And then I will start doing some rusting and using weathering powders. And at that step, that's where I really want to go and maybe run out to Game Castle and see about what they have for their AK um, selection of weathering materials. Because they do have some like muds and such. Because I really want to do, I think I kind of want to put mud into the tr treads. And so that's the idea. Hello Diggs, welcome to the stream. It is lovely to have you here. Nice for you. What kind of, what color are you going for your Primaris? Are you going with a known chapter or are you doing something OG? Or something original? Yeah, see, I was also thinking gunmetal would work good because I was worried the silver, because most of the silvers that I have are like a really bright silver. I don't have that many like antique silvers and I just was worried that that was going to be too shiny almost um because i don't really see that much like really bright shininess on the tank specifically so that was the idea there got it it was one of his one of his films excellent like i just i think the i've never really watched anything where it's not been a big franchise that he's been part of i will admit i've only seen him Yeah, I really feel like I've only seen him in, like, the big movies that he's been in. Like, the franchise movies. Like, Star Wars, Indiana Jones. Isn't he in, um... Is he... Hold on, let me let me double check before I embarrass myself. By stating something, I also need to let this finish drying. Um, okay. Harrison Ford. Oh, okay, yes, I was correct. Blade Runner. So I, I think, like, and that's the the other main thing that I know him from. Uh, again, all of those big intellectual properties beyond him. So I've never seen something that's been, like, smaller that he's done. Your own chapter? That's awesome! Oh, very nice. A red color scheme. Love it. I do enjoy that color, especially on Space Marines. It just looks so crisp on their armor. My, my own chapter is also in a red color scheme. They're a successor chapter of the Blood Angels. Are yours a successor chapter to anybody, or are they a pure, like, your own thing? Oh, you know, I forget that he's in Red October because I've never actually watched that. Ah, they're an Imperial Fist successor chapter. That's great. I love, so my first chapter that I ever painted up when playing 40k was Crimson Fists. 
Laura Croft is pretty cool, but again, I've also never been really into Laura Croft. I just, I don't think I've really been into that type of adventure film. Because I never really got into Laura Croft, never got into Indiana Jones. I don't play the, um... God, I don't even remember the name of the, the, the big... The big video game franchise that is entirely, a, like, a Laura Croft-esque thing, but it's a dude. Drake? Something? Is that what it's called? I don't remember. Anyways, the point is... That's, you know what, that's absolutely true. It would dry faster with a bit of warm air. I think it's actually fine to work and move around. Now, it's mostly dried, so you're completely right. I need to actually get a um, smaller one. My problem is, so I have a, like, I haven't changed my hair dryer out in, like, years. Um, and I am kind of afraid to use it on my models because I worry it might get too hot now and actually, like, melt some of the plastic or warp it too much so i need to get a new one that i know is like fresh and has good temperature control because i'm genuinely concerned about that that's why i never go and grab it because i do have one but it makes me nervous to, to use on my models because it gets very warm all right let's get the top sides of these treads and we'll get working on this like section of um these panels i don't know why my like voice went out there for a second oh i can also you know the next time i have to stop and let something dry i should realize that i can actually work on you know the top of the tank in between we should do that that's more efficient uncharted thank you that's what it is i knew like i didn't think that drake was the name of the game but i couldn't remember anything else about it except for the character's name so i'm glad you guys got it from that yes the Uncharted series. Like, I never, never got into that either. I just don't think I got into that style of content. <laughs> which is really funny because I do, like, I do like Jumanji, which has a little bit of that adventure vibe. And, like, I like adventure anime. Weird. I don't know why. All right, so that's looking good. Let's get the top of this. I'm going to end up doing those canisters in a different color, so we're going to avoid them. Let's go ahead. I mean, I guess we don't need to avoid them specifically, but we're not going to worry if we don't get them fully covered up. is looking good. I do tend to paint them with having a little bit of wear and tear. I've done a little bit of both. Um, weathering powders and that kind of stuff is something relatively new to me. I've used it a fair amount at this point, but I only really got into them recently. Um, I don't know why this keeps happening a little bit. I keep randomly having 
sections where the paint wants to peel away. And I'm not sure if it's the primer, the paint not being mixed enough. Like, I'm really sure what's doing that. Yeah, see, because it's happening down here. Like, it just doesn't want to stick to the section. Even though it looks exactly like the other sections. Why? Mystery. I'll eventually get it to stick. It just takes a while, and I'm not really sure what's causing that. I will look back and check on chat in just a second, guys. I'm just trying to fiddle with this so that I get as little sh little streaking as I possibly can. Yeah, it's still doing it. Why are you doing that? Knock it off. Okay. I'm gonna let that chill and keep an eye on it to see if it randomly separates and creates a gap in my paint. Don't know why I was doing that. Oil on plastic? Ah, maybe that is what it is. It's weird though, I primed it, so like it shouldn't be on the surface level anymore, I don't think, if there was any left over, but I thought I got it pretty clean. But yeah, it must be, you're probably right. Oh, you know what? I bet it is for my fingers. You're probably right. Okay. Can I use rubbing alcohol without taking the paint, like the primer up? I've done that before in the past, Michael. That's a good point. I could have roughed it up with some um, sandpaper before I primed it. That's okay, though. All right, it looks like it's drying fine, so I'm just going to let it continue to dry. What did you do? Nothing! What's it... the thumbprint I was hearing? No, 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 it wasn't thumbprint. Um, This section was having, like, you know how sometimes the paint will just, like, not stick to the primer or whatever? Oh, It yeah. was doing that, and people were saying it might have been for my fingers, like... The oil. Like, the oil on I my fingers. Yeah. So, nothing that you did. Calm I, down. I primed it, so it couldn't be my fault. I mean, that's I guess that's true, but, I like... I did double coat the darn thing, though. I'd be kind of surprised if it... That's, that's why I was saying, like, that's why I think it might be my fingers, like, more than anything else. Yeah. Alright. While we are... Ooh, I'm gonna get footage of this. Okay, let me real quick grab this. Ah! I have one with some putty on it already. No, don't do that. Don't do that in there. Yep. Nope, you're right. Do it on the back. Got it. All right. I'm going to hold it up like that, and we're going to work on the surface. It scared me about that. Sorry. There's some, like, mechanics. Yeah, no, there is. There is. Okay. Um, I think this will be fine. I used the um, Tamiya primer, specifically this one, the TS48, German, oh, I'm sorry, I lied, it was this one, TS4, German gray, still Tamiya color, but I did give you actually the wrong, the wrong color first. I'm 
I need to get back to moving this paint around. It is pooling. You know, now that I think about it, I wonder if this is also alcohol-based. It does have a way... way stronger smell. I'll have to look at that in more detail, but that actually might also be partially why the paint isn't sticking. Because this is the water-based. So it may be... Possibly from that too, but it's probably more likely the oils. Alright, let's get the gun coated in our color. rest of the tank. There we go. Looking lovely. Oh, I cannot wait to start, like, the weathering process on this thing. Like, it's just gonna be so much fun to play with. I'm- I really want to build up texture. It's one of my main objectives with this tank, is I just- I want to play with texture. I'm just really invested in what I'm doing. Sorry, I will get back to you guys in just one moment. I realize I've gotten a little... A little quiet, but I'm just... I'm really enjoying what I'm doing, and I'm vibing with the music. I'm also just making sure I get this from, like, every angle. heavy. But that's okay. We've fixed it. No, that's feeling- I'm feeling really good about that. It just kind of looks dark on the screen for you guys, I apologize. You're not seeing the nuances of what I've done. Alright, I'm gonna put a little bit of sticky tack on 
this thing and get it up so that it can dry. Wonderful. Get our little tank back in. See how this is coming along. I really like the color tone we're getting. Like, I feel like it's very much looking like I will see if I can get it to be brighter, okay? Oh, no, no, no. It's not It's not even that. I Sorry. I think it's just like this. It looks kind of dark because it is, um, we're working with dark colors. That's all. Yeah, I can't configure anything without doing it on the actual M50. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. We'll, we'll like, I think it's totally fine. I am not, no, I don't think I'm familiar with Dirty Down, actually. Is that a... How do you like that? I have upped your gain. Oh, I actually like that a lot. Okay, see right here where it says plus one? Yes, yes, I'm on that seeing that. Box. Yeah. Oh yeah, that because that actually looks more like what I'm seeing. Yeah, now. it does look more realistic. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so the way you change that, Angela? Yes. It's this box down here, you tap on it. Zero is default. Got it. Okay, there's so a minus, we... there's a plus. You Understood. Yeah. Oh, that looks so good. There you okay. go. So that is what I have done so far. We're getting just a really nice tint, and I really like it. Now that we have that, let me show you this. And there we go. Obviously it's still drying, so it looks a little strange, but I'm really, really liking it. I love washes for that reason. It's actually one of the reasons that I enjoy contrast paint so much because it functions so similarly to a wash. It ends up really doing just the great stuff. Yeah, no, I'm really, really happy with how this is turning out. I almost panicked. I was like, oh my God, I have been going for way too long. And I realized the stream actually started at three. So we have another hour left, which is great. Um, okay, so keeping that hour in mind, let's continue working on this sucker. I'm going to switch it now to the other side, and we're going to do this section, and then we'll do the top. I think that is the best way to approach this. So let's just get started doing all of the blue. Oh yeah, that looks so much better in my opinion. I'm so glad he was able to adjust that really easily for us. I had not realized that was something I could, <laughs> couldn't fix. I feel like I probably should have done that a little while. Oh, nice digs. That's really cool that you make your own washes. Also, we'll see you when you get back. Hello, Andreas. Ah, oh, you're working on some iron jaws. Fantastic. Have you seen, you've seen the new iron jaws uh, model that, I think it was iron jaws, wasn't he? On the announcement for the Nova open um, preview, I think they showcased a new iron jaws character. What did you think of that? Hello, John, welcome to the stream. Yes, Josh, I am. Yeah, it looks great. That's what I thought. I thought he was an Iron Jaws. I've not worked with oil paints much. I've never worked with them on models. But I have worked with them on canvas. And I did not like it. Um, I was also very impatient when I was a young woman. So I just think I didn't enjoy how kind of slow it was to work with them. 
but I've never tried them on miniatures. I'm not sure I'm super interested in them. I really don't like the way they flow because of how thick they are. Like, I, that's one of the reasons I like contrast so much, because I am a massive fan of watercolor. Um, that's, like, my favorite medium in regards to, like, traditional painting styles, even over acrylic. And contrast paint flows like a watercolor paint would. So inks and watercolors are really more my jam, and, and, and oil is pretty much the opposite of that in regards to how the paint behaves and reacts. So I'm just, I don't think I'd enjoy it much. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I am not surprised that it's not uncommon to... To dislike oil paints. Um, hell, I'm pretty sure like half of half of my class where we had to use the oil paints was not pleased about having to work with them because none of us liked them. Because you want to know why art students especially really don't like oil paints? When you're a poor art student, having to buy a single like thirty dollar tube of paint that's only so big for a single class for a single project feels like the j biggest waste of money on the planet. And to be fair, it was, because all those oil paints that I bought, I threw out. I didn't even have anybody I could donate them to. This is like, you know, a really, really, really long time ago at this point. <laughs> when I had these paints, because this was back in college. But, the point is, is... I was very bitter, can you tell? <laughs> and I, the sucky thing was, is I didn't just have to buy, like, one tube of paint. We had to buy, um... It was a color theory class. So I, of course, had to buy at least the primary so that I could mix them to make the other paints. To be able to then use. Because we couldn't just use a single, like, it couldn't be a monochromatic piece. So I ended up having to buy, like, a bunch of colors. And all of the tubes were, like, stupid prices for the amount of paint you were getting. And it was just painful. Just very painful. Getting the underside of the tread again, if it's not obvious. Bitter and triggered, exactly. I think the reason that I feel so bitter about it is, as an art kid, like, because I went to art school for college, like, I was actually at a... That's, like, that That was the thing, is they did art. Um, every major is related to art. Um, and I already liked buying art supplies. And I would have much rather have spent that money on Copic markers or something, which was a medium I was much more excited to work with and could use in my main classes for my major... But the color theory class was just a, you gotta take this no matter what. And it was the most, one of the most bullshit classes that I took at that college. Um, because a lot of the foundation classes were just stupid. Um, I mean, they weren't actually, but some of them were. Some of the teachers really didn't care. And this teacher was all about painting squares. Dear God, did he really like us to just paint watches of squares and it was so boring it was the like worst assignments good lord <laughs> also yes cleaning oil brushes is a chore and you also really should not clean them in a sink to have the oil paint go into your sink because it can clog it because it's oil paint it doesn't dissolve in water so it's just i don't know there's a lot of it's a very cool medium but one that I just think is not worth the amount of effort it requires. And I've always felt that way. Ever since I was a wee lass. But who knows, maybe working on them on miniatures is way more enjoyable and less problematic. I just, like, don't they take forever to actually fully dry? So then you can't handle the miniatures. 
And I feel like, I don't know, doesn't that sub defeat the purpose? Like, do you, are you mostly using them? Like, for those of you that do actually use oils on your miniatures, are you doing this predominantly on display pieces that you're not actually playing with ever? Or are you doing it on, like, your active army, this is what you play with? Because I think that's the thing that I've not... Like, I feel like most people that I see who use oil paints are either doing them as a finishing touch almost to create texture or they're doing it on busts that they don't plan on every like it's not for a game or something you know what i mean getting the underside of the what, I don't know what this is called, but the little thing that hangs over the treads to kind of protect them from getting super dirty, I guess? I don't know if that's the actual intent, but that's kind of how I view it. Oh, I didn't do the inside of the wheels on this side, so let me do that while I've got him on this, at this angle. I don't know if that'll even be seen, but might as well if I can see it from here, right? I mean, the treads are going to get coated and a bunch of other things, so I guess it's not that big of a deal, but... <laughs> I'll know, and it'll bother me. And now you'll know, and it might bother you. You don't use oils on your minis? That's fair. looking pretty good from this angle on those first three we just have this last one to kind of take care of there we go Yeah, I really like how this blue wash sits onto this German gray color tone. Like, I almost even feel like I could push it darker. Like, I could do a second layer to even match closer to um, what I actually see in some of the reference material. But I'm not going to because I'm going to do other things and I'm worried it'll end up building up too much texture, I think. Like, in the wrong ways. Not yet, Dim. I went and checked the other day um, when I was out, and unfortunately, it's not open yet. They still have their, like, hiring sign, and they say they're opening soon. So my expectation is the last week of August is when they'll actually open up, but I can't wait to go shopping there. Honestly, I'm kind of glad that it needs, that it's not open yet, because I need my credit card to take over before I go and buy more things, because I don't want to put too much on it at once, you know what I mean? And I plan on going big. I want to I wanna find some fun stuff. I want to definitely find some very, very fun stuff. Um, let's check in, actually, on the top. Okay, this actually turned out very nice. Let's... I'm pretty happy with that. It's a little splotchy, but we're going to be doing some other things. And I think it'll end up just making it look kind of weathered. I, I'm pretty happy with it. Although I do notice that I missed a little like edge here. So let me... There we go. All right, and then the last thing we need to do is I do want to get at least this section on the other side. All 
All right, cool. Um, since that actually has a little bit of a raise, I don't need to worry about it drying too much. I can actually just flip it upside down. Set that off to the side, and now we just wait for things to dry. Um, actually, while we're doing that, I'm gonna grab myself some of the little Japanese candies that I got earlier when I went to the market. So I'll be right back. not step off screen so that I could take a draw. You did. Hmm. Don't worry, model plastics. <coughs> I have some plans to do some highlighting. <laughs> you bought five of the new Demon Baby props? That's amazing. Diggs, welcome back. Oh no. Well, you know, at least you're getting something delicious like pizza. That does sound nice. <coughs> oh, that's fun. That is something that I do miss about having like a, a retail job is when the retail spaces got to decorate for the season. Uh, because the game store that I worked at, they always went big for Halloween because there were so many Honestly, just goths in the store, and so we all loved Halloween a lot. Go figure. And it was great to see. I don't really want to move this. However, I do want to do a little bit of testing. I guess I kind of have to. Hold on. Okay. I want to do a little bit of testing while we wait for a couple things to dry to see how this is going to look over top my wash. So this is the test that I used, um... I have so many of these Lego. I have so many of these Lego brick separators that these are now what I'm using for any paint testing because it's plastic so I can prime them up, test whatever primers I want on them and then do whatever other testing I want on them and get a pretty good feel of what that's gonna be on either my Warhammer miniatures, perhaps my scale models, etc. So. I'm gonna use my vortex mixer on this bad boy real quick and I just want to see how this works both as a dry brush as well as edge highlighting because part of me really feels like the dry brush texture could be interesting on the tank but I do also have concerns that there's so many flat panels that it could also not be so I want to see if I can be controlled enough to maybe just do the edges We'll find out. Oh yes, Steven, I am aware that a heat gun or a, a hair dryer would definitely help speed up the drying process. And I do have a blow dryer, but I have that exact heat problem concern of it's a much older blow dryer and I'm pretty sure it gets hotter than it should at this point. I really should replace it. And I don't want to risk it. <laughs> so we're going to do this test in the meantime while we let things dry. It's actually almost like the stuff that I did earlier is almost completely dry already. I just need to go a little longer, so we're gonna do some testing, but I need a vortex mix this first. You guys hear that by the way? Can you hear the vortex mixer from all the way over there or all the vibrations go through my hands. Oh, Richard, that's so cool. I, Japan is on my bucket list of places to go at some point in my life, hopefully sooner rather than later, because the weeb in me would love that. Like I am a 
an old school otaku. Um, I also just want to like go to all of the onsens. Just, I just want to bathe a lot in Japan. So much. All right. How smelly is this going to be? Not too bad. I don't know, I think it's a dry brush. But I'm just hitting the edges. I like what that's doing. Yeah, so I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. I might even end up mixing. <gasps> okay, this is actually to see how this is gonna work. What happens? Did you dry already? Hold on. Does this stuff dry really fast because of the alcohol? Is that what's happening? Because I can believe that. Ooh, they do mix. Kind of. Very softly. But I did get a little bit of a darker... But what happens... Okay, so I can't actually mix them. That's unexpected, actually, for me. My first edge highlighting. Legitimately, I've actually never edge highlighted like specifically before and I think that's the closest I've ever gotten to like legit edge highlighting So congratulations, you've witnessed it and experienced it. Okay, that's what I thought because like alcohol markers dry really fast It's one of the nice things about them and you can layer them because of that. So I assumed because of the um, alcohol in the acrylic uh, It might do the same thing, but I wasn't 100% sure sick. All right. Well, this is now I think dry enough to at least put this direction so that we can continue working on the washes. Ooh, very cool. What, uh, what two characters you got? Oh, you did end up getting your two most desired characters in both. Sick. What do you mean by hairspray technique? Do you mean like flicking, like using the brush to flick it to give the splatter effect? Why not, um, what, what makes that superior over maybe doing sponging, which is what I was originally going to do for the chipping look? Can I see the highlights? Oh yeah, here. It's pretty good. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. And I think the dry brush technique will even work on it too, because it's not, it's as long as I'm on the edges, it gives it a little bit of a chipped, like slightly weathered effect, mm -hmm. which I think will look good. So I think I'm going to try it. Excellent. 
You're still on the wash, right? I'm still on the wash, yes. That was just my test. I wanted to see, like, I hadn't used this, like, I've never used their paints before. Mm -hmm. My first experiment with the Tamiya acrylics. So I wanted to see, like, how it handled, what the consistency was, etc. And I actually really like it. It's, it's thicker. I find it interesting because it's thicker than, say, contrast and, and speed paint. But it's definitely way thinner than any of the standard Citadel acrylics. It actually reminds me a little bit more to the consistency of, I don't know how many of you guys have used the Reaper brand of paint called Master Series paints, but they are a very creamy paint. Like I legitimately would describe it as creamy. And the Tamiya paints, when I was dipping my brush into them, um, had a similar consistency to me. And I don't know what they're putting in the paint to make it so creamy feeling, but I like it a lot, actually. Like, if I were to use more traditional acrylic paints, that is how I want them to behave and come out of the bottle. I don't want to have to water them down as much as I do with Citadel or even Army Painter and even Vallejo sometimes. Like, is I still feel like I have to add so much water to it to get, really get it to the that buttery consistency people tell you to get it to. Whereas I feel like the Master Series paint and these Tamiya ones are already in that buttery, creamy consistency. And I don't know what their secret is. Maybe the toxic chemicals that make it lightable on fire. <laughs> Alright. Just because they dry too quickly? Is that why they may, they're they not as good for brush painting? I just realized I also have not done the tops of the treads on the side, so I'm like, oh, I should probably get to that. You know, I might end up doing the second wash on the treads on both sides, just to make them a little bit darker. Because I was planning originally on doing them in black anyways. But I, I feel like that's not really how they look in the reference that I've seen. But having them just be more dark gray would, I think, work better. Just doing some touch up.
All right, I think that is better. Let's continue working on the section we're actually working on before it uh, all dries. <laughs> Awesome, Steven. Congratulations on the win. Very cool. Did you, um, since you were using Tommy exclusively, did you do it via airbrush or was, um, did you hand paint any of it? All right, that is feeling good. Let's get the side of the treads. Yeah, that's looking good. Let's just kind of drench it in blue. Okay, so German tanks have a little bit more of a rusted look because they were metal tracks. That makes sense. Like, these do look very, uh, like, like they should be metal rather than, like, a rubber or something like that. Um, I think I just had it in my head, rubber, because the Merkava that I painted, or not painted, sorry, that I built... Because it was an older style Tamiya's kit, it was from like the 80s, it actually had rubber treads. And so my in my head, for some reason, treads are just rubber, even though that makes absolutely no sense. Um, but that's what they used to represent it, which was really cool, actually. I'm kind of, I'm like, I'm a little sad that this one doesn't have that, but at the same time, it's kind of cool that I get to paint them. And um, I feel like weathering them is going to be a lot easier than if they were actually rubber, so. I have a feeling I'm not going to mind. Just getting the insides of the treads a little bit on the facing this direction since they will actually be quite visible. Even over the like underside, which I was worried about earlier. them on the other side too. Nice, this is coming along great. Like, honestly, I think the wash might be part of the slowest pr process for me. Just because, um, one, I need to let it dry, and also there's kind of a little bit of a touch-up back and forth that I'm doing. Just to, to make every sure everything looks the way that I want it to. Like, I want it to look realistic and weathered and like it's being used. I don't want it to look pristine and clean. That's that's my main goal with this butt, this guy. Like, with this tank. Pleased with that. I'm gonna work on the front. 
treads because they're kind of weak looking. Thank you, Marcos. I'm really happy with it so far. And I know I haven't, I guess, done that much, but I feel like the progress I'm making is matching up with my expectations of what I wanted to do, and there's something very satisfying from that. It's honestly one of the reasons I enjoy working on models so much. I feel like this point with the skill level that I've reached, when I visualize what I want something to look like, I generally find that I am at least creative enough to think about how I might actually achieve such a such a look. And generally, I have found that I've been able to execute it. The problem is, is I just, I really don't like oil paints. I, I have seen what you're talking about, Cartman, uh, Cartman K. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. Um, and I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen some other people do that. I just, I don't know. I've just never been fond of oil paints. You may have missed my rant about it. <laughs> Probably won't be doing anything with dry brushing on this model plastics. We're going pure dry brushing, traditional painting, no airbrushes. But I definitely, oh, you said, you said dry brush. Yes, I will absolutely be dry brushing some on, <laughs> on the sprockets. I'm actually going to be doing um, some sponging later as well to give a chipping effect, which I think will end up looking really cool. Got it, Cartman TKE. Got it. Sorry. <laughs> I am terrible with names. You will you will learn this quickly if you if you follow the channel and watch my content. I try my best, but I'm just I terrible at it. Richard, no problem. Thank you. Oh, well, I I hope that your therapy time goes well. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for hanging out with me. I don't know why I'm closing this paint. I need it still. I think I was just self-conscious that I was sitting open. All right. What we're going to do now is, I think, move on to the front. Actually, I mean, I guess technically this is the back. So let's actually do the front, like I said. I think I can... I'm going to lean it this way. So that is now the side done. Give it more paint. Bam. Dot filtering? What do you mean dot? What is dot filtering? I, I don't know if I've heard of this technique, or at least not by that name. Is it- are, are you talking about, like, speckling? Oh yeah! Oh, that's cool. Sounds like a neat effect.
This wash is even really gonna stick to this little sticky uppy bit, this little antenna. I don't actually know if that's an antenna. I should not call it that. I don't know if it's an actually an antenna, but it looks kind of like one. Kind of is though, which is impressive to me. All right, so I think we want to go around the front now a little bit. I'm gonna just reload my brush. <clears throat> Base coat, gloss coat, hairspray, top coat, color. Once dry, use wet brush with water to chip at the paint. It'll reactivate the hairspray and the chip. Oh, I see. Okay, I didn't realize that. That's I've seen that done. But I didn't know that's what that was a way to refer to it. That's cool. Do you have to use a specific type of hairspray or can you just use any brand? I'm kind of curious about like, because there are, you know, I assume different hairsprays might have as somebody who doesn't actively use hairspray on her hair, um, and I never really have, I but I assume there's like different chemicals and different brands. And so are you wanting, like, are you looking for a specific chemical to be in the hairspray in, for, in order for this to achieve, like this effect to happen? Or can you just, are you just like guaranteed it with whatever? I'm doing a test on the bottom. I just want to see what this thing looks like with a second coat over over everything and the bottom's the where to test that. So, we're just we're doing it. We're going for it. I'm nothing no one can stop me. Not a single one of you has the ability to actually cease this action. I think I like this. I think I'm getting that bluer color I wanted. All right, I might be doing a second coat. Which means I might be doing a third coat on the treads. Who knows? Let's go and layer this bitch. Is this the, um, here, let me, let me get it. Is this container here on, I think the back of the tank, is this an ammo crate? Um, would it be the same color as the tank itself generally, or would it be a different color from the tank? I would like to know before I slather it with blue. So I've done salt techniques on watercolor paintings before to create a really cool effect because the water, like, the paint and the water react 
into the salt in it. Is that is that what you mean when you're talking about using a salt technique on airplanes? It would be the same color? Okay. It's just a storage container. Understood. These would not be though, right? Like these are these these are oil containers, so I can make these different. Is everything the same color? That's so boring. I mean, I guess it's probably safer that way. It camouflages, but. Not what Warhammer has taught me. I can paint it different? Okay, cool. Good, I'm not gonna paint it blue. Cause like, as, long, as much as I am enjoying this color tone, um, I don't want it to all be this color tone. That feels very drab. And I want my tanks to be anything but drab, frankly. <laughs> Um, what about this, this thing? This is also like an, just an extra kind of container that I can paint separately, right? This, this little guy. Very well, I shall do this, Michael. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, um, what we do need to do, however, next is a larger segment. So we're gonna do the, the, the front, finally. Let's get our brush loaded up. And we're gonna start on this section. I'm not gonna so much worry if this section, like this round section, doesn't actually have the paint stick to it because, frankly, it's gonna be underneath the topper, um, the gun turret. I called it the topper. Um, sorry, just I, I am I am dumb sometimes and it amused me. Um, and so I am not worried about if it gets paint or not. I got completely distracted by my my nonsense. I don't want to touch it, it's it's all wet. <laughs> Sorry, I amuse myself, clearly. Oh yeah, why would I why would I love that specific pattern? Like is it a paint pattern? Like a camouflage pattern? Dude, I was, um, I was working for the military when they brought in that pixel camo that I think now is being phased out or something. I, I don't remember correctly, but I remember seeing something recently about it, how it was just, it was bad. Um, and it, and how no one liked it. And at least that's, that's what I've read. And I always thought it looked like garbage. <laughs> I missed the old style stuff. Made me so sad when they changed it out. Let's flip that around, and we're going to do the back now. Okay. There we go, there we go.
Got it, that makes sense. I like inspired by... I thought about it when I was actually like deciding to work on this tank. Because one of the things that's been honestly held me back from wanting to work on some of the scale models in regards to painting them is just the potential backlash of people being like, oh my god, you didn't do it historically accurately. How dare you? And while being historically accurate, I do think can be fun sometimes and definitely very interesting because you end up learning, um, I think, by, you know, ideally researching the history of why you're painting it that way. You can learn a lot about what you're doing and everything, and that can be very fun, and I still did some of that by doing it this way, but I really wanted to still take a little bit of my own twist on it, which is why, for example, I'm using a wash on this thing. I don't really feel like, in my experience with seeing people work on scale models, that this is, like, the first step. Um, and so I still wanted to put my own twist on approaching the tank, but I wanted to still have it be somewhat historical, which is why I researched and found that this blue color tone is actually very common on the 38T. And I wanted to sort of create that, but I didn't want to just go straight with a, like a blue primer, which is why I ended up not using this navy color tone despite having picked it up. And instead we're doing the wash technique. Um... But I do really like having some historical references. Like, I still like it being clearly meant to represent or be referencing that historical thing, even if it's not exactly historical. I think that's kind of what I'm going for here. Which is why I appreciate everybody's advice on, like, things that I could or could not do. Like, I'm still going to end up going with my own choices, but I really do appreciate, like learning about why certain things were done certain ways. Like why everything might be painted the same on the outside, because it all just wants it to blend in and hides it better, which does make sense. And you know, when you're thinking about the safety of your men, obviously yes. But there aren't any men going to war in this little tank. This little tank is just going to sit on my shelf proudly to be displayed in all of its glory. I just like looking at camo patterns. I've not really researched like the 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 significance of some of them, but I when I was doing I did some camo pattern on on um I'm blanking on the name of... Gaunt's Ghosts. I have the Gaunt's Ghost characters, and I picked one to do to paint up on the channel. And I can't remember the character's name, because I do apologize. I've not actually read the Gaunt's Ghost books. I just thought the characters were really cool, and I know... Um, I do like Guardsmen. I just think they're fun. And they had some really like interesting sculpts, right? Being named heroic characters for the guard. Uh, being from the novels and everything. So I painted one of them up using a... I think it was ended up being a tiger stripe style pattern. And it was so fun to work on. It was also nerve-wracking. Because I would never freehanded camo before. Okay, by Squadron Publications. Interesting. I've never heard of them. I have some Osprey books that, um, I don't know. I don't have any of the ones about, like, any of the tanks or the military vehicles, but I have some about some of the ancient, like, warriors. Um, specifically, I think I have, like, a samurai one, and there was one other one in particular that I, like, got because at one point I was going to use the designs as, like, reference, and I can't remember which one it is. It's in my closet somewhere. I'll look it up some point. Um... But that's the only, like, historical sort of reference books that are specifically tied to game systems, at least, that I've, I've ever gotten. 
I also used to get those I Spy books. Do you guys remember those from, like, being a kid? I had the night one. <laughs> that was my favorite. I actually think I still have it. I think I rebought it is what happened. Or Chaos Cultist may have rebought it for me. Okay. That is feeling pretty good. I think we just need to let stuff dry and then possibly see it from like getting a, a second wash. I'm gonna just spread a little bit of this paint around still. It's kind of wet so I can still do that. Hopefully without completely ruining everything. Oh, shit, did I... Hold on. I think I saved it. Okay, I'm just gonna not touch it for a minute. It needs to dry. It needs to dry, and... We are actually going to wrap up the stream because it's almost five o'clock and I am starting to get a smidge, not super hungry, but I am starting to get a little peckish and I do have a guest over actually today and I have been ignoring her for the last two hours because I have been with you working on my 38T Panzer Kampf wagon. Um, I have really enjoyed this. I hope you guys have liked seeing the progress that we're making. You kind of have an idea of what I'm ending up going to be doing for the Panzer. That video will be coming out over the next, or in a like in a week or two. Um, so be expecting that in like two to three weeks. Uh, that's that's my time range. I haven't like fully nailed down exactly when it's coming out. Kind of as a matter of how much more do I get done on this while I have guests over, etc. And how much time does it take me to get the actual like speaking portions done. But I don't think it'll be too bad and I'm really looking forward to this and I hope you guys are too. Um, yeah, this has been great. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, to everybody who's been chatting with me the entire time, thank you guys so, so very much. Um, you guys have been amazing. <laughs> Uh, and also, we learned a lot today. Thank you guys for sharing your various techniques that you use on your own scale models, the various paints that you work on, etc. So that has been awesome. I've really enjoyed getting to explore the hobby with you today. I have been Angela. I will see you guys next time. And I hope you all have a very, very wonderful hobby night. Bye! <laughs>